If there is a button to slow you down, I don't want to know it. Oh! Welcome back to another episode of Saturday Afternoon Gaming. I'm your host, Gaming Jay, and today we're playing Alley Cat by Brill Williams, uh, presented on IBM PC compatible computers. Um, you know, you guys have heard of the golden days of like comics and movies and stuff. Well, Alley Cat here, as you can probably tell from the graphics, comes from the cyan days, the good old CGA graphics days of early DOS. And uh, I know CJ also had sort of a red and brown color palette, and I know on composite monitors it could actually do many more colors, but I feel like most of us who grew up on DOS gaming played a hell of a lot of games with this purple, cyan, <laughs> blue and white color palette, which are just like the worst colors to put together, but whatever, we were playing games on the computer. Uh, we loved it. So Alley Cat here is one of the first games that I think I ever remember playing on PC. Um, and it was a game that I had. I had it on five and a quarter inch, the black floppy disks, and I loved it. Uh, please select your skill level. Kitten, House Cat, Tom Cat, or Alley Cat. Let's start on Kitten, because this is actually a pretty challenging game. Um, this is a single screen platformer. Most early computers had trouble scrolling, so Super Mario Brothers and Nintendo had a huge leg up on early DOS games because uh, they not only not only did Mario like play super well with great hit detection and like very subtle jumping controls, um, but it also could scroll the screen, and, and computers had trouble with that. Anyway, uh, Control S turns the sound on and off. Control R restarts the game. Control M returns to the main menu. Escape puts the game in pause mode oh the puns are beginning already and the cursor keys control the cat and alt performs special actions and that's all you need to know so here's the world of alley cat you are a black little alley cat just hanging out in some trash cans and the point of the game is to hop up uh into some of these windows and when you get into windows then you get uh, mini games and uh there's a magical broom probably from uh, disney's fantasia that is uh, trying to sweep up all the little paw prints you have left all over the place. Now, if you accidentally get knocked out of the window in while you're playing one of these mini games, you lose. So you have to try and not let that happen. But the broom will sometimes just knock you all over the place. Damn, we almost got that mouse. All right, here we go. We got him, yeah! So you have to beat the mini games. Then you come back out the window. Well, <laughs> I just did a huge dive uh into the alley there and then uh once you've beaten a mini game then you get this sort of love mini game where you have to ow get to the top okay that's not gonna work oh no i fell down you have to get to the top of that and if you do you find your like kitty love and oh it's the same mini game and then you basically get to make baby kittens so it's a game about mating in the strictest possible sense, and uh, there you go. So yeah, this is the sort of uh, green, or sorry, uh, red and brown and green, I guess, color palette. This is the alternate color palette for CGA. Uh, other than that, the game's gonna be played in purple. What, what? how did I just die there? That sucks. Um, I like how the game, by the way, has like your high score on the uh, on the board, on, on like the, the alley wall. Uh, oh God, jump. Jump, jump, ugh, ugh. So one thing that actually um, I hate about these old DOS games is they don't have proper jump mechanics. So in these old DOS games, when you press jump, you can only, oh, we made it, we made it. Okay, the top cat is the one that we want. That's the one we want to mate with. Woo, we found our, we found our long lost love. Um, but with these old DOS games, one of the things I really hate about them is that, like, when you jump, you're, like, locked into the physics of the jump. Like, you, you can't, like, if I jump, I can't control myself like Mario. I'm just, I'm just gone. I'm going. And it, it makes for, like, very rigid gameplay. And, like, many, many, many early platformers were like this. And I think, you know, a lot of people give credit to Mario for having, like, side-scrolling as it's big, uh, oh, there's a dog in this apartment. Um, in addition to spiders. Um, but a lot of people give uh, Nintendo credit and Mario credit with, um, you know, the whole side-scrolling. Let's create a lot of paw prints to keep this broom busy. Um, boom, we got it. But I think the ability to 
sort of precisely control your jumps is actually a huge thing that Nintendo and Mario did for the, the gaming uh, community that I think is not, I mean, it's not like people don't recognize it, but I think it's not often people's like number one go-to thing for like what Mario did to improve the platformer. Because like, honestly, um, games where you, oh yeah, we did it. Games where you can't control your jump once you're in the air feel really dated these days. Pretty much, it's completely physically impossible. <laughs> we have baby cats jumping and we just die, okay. Oh, and here's a dog in the alley. If the dog catches you, he will uh, basically kill you, so you don't want the, that to happen. Um, oh, this one again. I want, there's like four or five mini games. I wanna, whoops, <laughs> find them all for you guys. Um, but yes, yeah, basically, oh, the dog got me. In real life, if you jump, you are committed to that jump. You have no ability to control, you know, your jump in the air or anything like that. So it's completely uh, artificial to allow you in a video game to control your jump in the air, but it makes for so much better gameplay. So I think that um, the invention of the ability to control yourself in the air was, I, I, I can't say for certain if Mario was the first one to do it, but it was the first game that I ever played where you could do that, and it just made the game feel like a, a generation above these early platformers. Damn, I cannot seem to get up here. This is actually tricky. Love them mouses. See what, uh, see what the graffiti on the wall says there, guys? Oh, God, the dog turns around. Three cats, zero eight... 0110. Is that a phone number that we can dial? Man, I cannot make this jump. Oh my god, I'm like falling through the platform. Okay, look at this. Oh, there we go. We finally made it. Oh god, I got bonked. Damn it. So I uh, I guess on the easier levels, or the first few levels, poo! Poo! Oh god, I didn't jump fast enough. You, uh, you have a lot more garbage cans to jump on. But in these later levels, it does not seem like you have very many options. God, this one jump. <sighs> okay, we did it. All right. Let's get in this one. All right, here we go. We get to go into the fish bowl. This is a fun mini game. You get to swim around and eat fishies. And you can actually drown. Notice how I'm changing color. You can drown, which is pretty cool. This game actually... So this game is 38 kilobytes, which is tiny. I have Microsoft Word documents. Many Microsoft, most of my Microsoft Word documents are bigger than this game. Yet, look at all the gameplay that is squeezed into this, you know? Like, imagine this. This came out in, I think it's like 1984 or that, or abouts there. You know, this, this is actually like a pretty cool concept for a game and a fair amount of gameplay. Oh, God. I don't know what these these little electrical things are, by the way. If you hit them, you get electrocuted. So I guess this person in their apartment, they are maintaining some fish and electric eels. We just got zapped. Damn, we were so close. And we died. And that's uh, that's basically Alley Cat. Um, today I have a special treat for you guys because normally we just play one game, but we're actually going to be playing uh, two games. Uh, I figured the Alley Cat was such a short game that I would quickly run out of stuff to talk about. And since I was sort of in the mode of playing this old CGA game, I kind of thought, uh, wouldn't it be cool to come back to some other CGA games? So I have one more game that we'll be playing. Maybe the next time I die in Alley Cat, like we get a game over, I will load up the second game. But the second game is a game called Sopwith, which is also from the Cyan era of DOS gaming, the good old CGA days. And, uh, ooh, we can jump right in. There we go. Sopwith was a game, oops, where you fly a Sopwith camel biplane around and you get to shoot up bases and stuff. So it's a very different style of game, but it has the exact same uh, color palette. And, oh, God. Um, oh, God, there's a dog in here. Uh oh, ah, he got us. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, man, there's there's like I think there's like at least one or two more mini games we have not seen yet. Um, so every every window is random. You have no idea. Shoot, which uh, which window is going to lead to which game? Oh god, oh god. Huh. So the way this game works is if you have a running start, 
you do a higher jump than if you're standing still. And that is actually like quite tough to manipulate sometimes. Like when you're standing on the garbage cans, it's hard to, um, oh God, it's hard to come up to a running start when you're on the garbage can, you know, like you only have so much space. So this game, the jump mechanics in this game are like shockingly difficult. But anyway, the CGA era of gaming is of course a beloved era for myself. It's back in the day when you used to have to mess with the config.sys and autoexec.bat to free up enough conventional memory. You know, you'd have 640K of RAM, and if you didn't have enough free, you'd have to et edit autoexec.bat, and you have to go in and like turn off drivers or like uh, free up conventional memory. It was a lot of, you had to almost be a hacker to play video games back in the day. It was very different than today. Anyway, Alley Cat, um, actually, you know what? We're gonna go in, I, I lied. I said that uh, we would stop after I died again, but I feel like there's still like a mini game or two we have not seen. And I kind of really want to just make sure we see all the mini games. Uh, mostly because I don't know if we'll ever come back and play this game again. And I myself just want to be reminded of all the games that exist. Okay, so here's a different one that we haven't seen. This one, there's a bird cage. We have to sort of knock the bird cage off the table. And once we have done that, oh God, this broom, then a bird will come out and then we have to catch the bird. And we caught him. Um, sometimes that bird will fly all over the screen totally randomly and it's like impossible to catch. Other times, as you saw right there, it can be trivially easy. And off to the mini game, all right. So the trick with this is to just find a path that leads up and to like head up before any of the other cats can get you. Like that, boom. It's, I guess if you plan it out, you can do a lot better, but if you just sort of start jumping like I typically do, you're uh, not necessarily gonna do all that good, but anyway. All right, off to level two. This level, the garbage cans are placed in a much easier location. Okay, this one again, oh God. There's, there's one mini game that I really wanna see. I actually remember it now where you have to drink the milk of sleeping dogs, which is as terrifying as it sounds. All right, broom, let's give you something to sweep. Stay out of our way. Oh, God. Ha! <laughs> Damn it. Here, here, kitty. All right, we lost that minigame, that's okay. Oh my God! <laughs> you can't even jump high enough to get over the dog unless you have like a pretty big running start. Oh my God. I think we're just dead here. Oh, we somehow made it. Oh God, again. So I think the way it works is when the white cat's head gets you, then that like summons a dog. Cause right now there's no dogs coming, but if the white cat hit me, then I'm sure a dog would come out. So a very interesting mechanic. Um, all right, we've seen the bookshelf one again. I feel like this one is like one of the easiest ones. All you do is like wait for the spider to come down a bit and then you can like have free reign to go up here and get these things. Ooh, man, that cat, that cat moves, oh God. Okay, hold on, let's go over here, over here, boom, boom. I kinda wish you had the ability to choose mini games cause I'm just sorta like hitting them randomly. Ah, oh, God, again. Ha, we died. <laughs> Game over. So, all right. This is the easiest difficulty setting too, by the way. This is the easiest difficulty setting. I think if you start on harder, it just starts you with the alley looking a little differently. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty similar. Um, so I don't think the difficulty does all that much. I think more dogs come generally, but that's about it. All right, now we see the difficulty in catching this bird. Oh, it was super easy though. Wanna eat the dog's milk, man. Not the dog's milk man, but the dog's milk. You guys know what I mean. Um, let's go ahead and get our lady kitty though. Um, let's find a good path here. So the Cupid's arrows keep changing the paths. Oh, well, that would have been a good one. I'm trying to like do this strategically. The right looks decent, but there's too many cats over there. Uh, can I make the left happen? No, there's too many cats now. I need these like other cats in the middle to go away. I guess, can you just stay on this level forever? Like there's no time limit. I think eventually a cat will spawn at my level and just screw me over. But yeah, like there's there's no path up there. I'm probably missing one. Okay, let's try this. Huh, huh, huh. Okay. 
That kind of worked. That kind of worked. Oh, we did it. I, I honestly didn't have faith that that was going to work. I thought that we were totally screwed. But we did it. Hearts and love ensue. And then I get tossed into the alley like the gutter trash I am. I'm like the trashiest cat of them all. Oh, this one again. Where are the dogs? Damn it. <laughs> I got bitten by a spider. Well, there are worse ends to being a cat. Oh, here it is. Here it is, the dog drinking level. So the way it works is you go up and, oh God, you go up to a dog and you drink milk from his bowl. And if both of his eyes open up, he will kill you. So you kind of have to see how he's like slowly waking up. Oh God. You kind of have to like scoot away from them when they start to wake up. And that's basically all you do. This one, oh, he woke up. This was actually a more sophisticated minigame because you had to use the alternate button. I don't think I have used the alternate button in any of the other minigames. Yeah, it does nothing on the main screen here. Um, oh, we got it again. How lucky. Let's see if we can actually do it this time. These bowls are easy because there's no no doggies over here sleeping. These are... It, what apartment, by the way, has like nine dogs? This broom is so annoying. Ugh, go away, broom. Can we give it something to do? There we go. Go ahead and sweep. Because I got milk to drink. Oh, God. Drink this guy's milk. These dogs also are so mean. It's like a little baby kitten. He's starving. He just wants some milk to drink. And what, they're going to kill him? Because he's a cat and they're a dog? He's like the cutest little black cat you've ever seen. All right, just one more. And there's not even... It doesn't even belong to a dog. They just put out extra bowls because they have so many dogs, this apartment. Yeah, who has nine dogs like that? And they all take a nap at the same time. What are they, like toddlers in kindergarten? What is going on in the world, even? Okay. Let's see if we can, like, bully our way up this. Oh, that didn't work. <laughs> huh. Okay. Huh. Yeah, you can't even make that jump. But you can... Oh, you can sort of do that. Okay, I died. Anyway, this has been Alley Cat. Let's pop over to Sopwith so we can see yet another CGA game that Gaming J spent a lot of his youth playing. All right, so here we are, Sop With by BMB CompuScience. Fun fact about this game, it was actually created to demonstrate Imaginet's proprietary networking system. So this has networked multiplayer game uh, play, but uh, you have to have proprietary Imaginet network drivers. Even some hacked versions were created that could play on a serial port, but you still needed the drivers. So for us, let's check out the single player game. And here's the world of Sop With. So you play a aviator, I guess, in a war here, and you have to shoot buildings and tanks and all sorts of stuff. Whoa, God, there you go. Interesting thing about this game is it actually does sort of simulate uh, what Sopwith planes are like. If you fly straight up, you can stall the plane. Oh, God, <laughs> and crash. All right, this is just a demo. You can also uh, drop bombs. Kaboom! Oh, I missed. See if we can bomb this guy. Kaboom! Oh, but the explosion can actually injure your plane. It kind of reminds me of in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, how vulnerable that plane that they escaped from the German Zeppelin was. You know, where they're like, uh, uh, Indy's dad accidentally like shoots up the tail. And uh, he's like, uh, did they get us? And he's like, son, they got us. And the tail's all shot up. It was actually Indy's dad who did it. Like the plane could shoot itself. That is some interesting design. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, dropping the bombs. I think I might be out of bombs. Notice that there are a couple of bars uh, sort of in the in the uh, bottom there. Uh, bottom next to my mini-map. Oh, my God! And I, st I started out. Okay, we've actually done reasonably well. We've almost cleared one side of the map. I don't know if there is actually a second level even, so I think the game is basically just, you do this, this is it. Uh, the game does, by the way, so this game is freeware. Um, it was released, so it was originally designed to show off the proprietary network uh, code of, uh, you know, BMB, the Imaginet, which of course never took off because, you know, uh, I mean, none of us have ever heard of it. I mean, maybe you guys have, but I definitely hadn't. I didn't even know that back when I used to play this game. Um, but this game was like wildly successful 
So much so, oh my god, I can't hit this building. So much so that the author eventually released the uh, code for this game as freeware. And so people have gone ahead and modified the code. Oh, I'm out of bullets. I'm out of bullets. All right, kamikaze time. We got the building. <laughs> the end. It's all, it's all garbled. And you get booted to the DOS prompt. So every time the game ends, it just boots you right to the DOS prompt. Let's try uh, one more time here. Uh, the game has weird controls, by the way. X starts your engine, then comma aims you up, and slash aims you down. So... <laughs> Well, we got the plane, or we got the tank. By the way, there's, uh, I think there's stuff over here, too. Yeah, there is. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, there you go. You kind of have to be a precision shot, because you don't have a lot of ammo. That is so hard to fly upside down. Um, I think back in the day, I used to be able to beat this. But anyway, the creator released this, the source code freeware. So people have ported this to all sorts of like modern computers. So if you're interested in playing this, you actually can play an updated version called Sopwith 2, uh, the author's edition. And it has sound, it has music, it has uh, camels, it has birds, flocks of birds in the air. It looks pretty similar to this, but it just kind of looks upgraded. I thought of playing that version for today, but to be totally honest... Um, I just wanted to play the version that uh, I played on my old my old uh, 286 DOS computer back in the day. So, oh, yeah, that was an awesome bomb. Oh, that almost hit, too. Can this one hit? Yeah! Oh, no, we missed. And we just crashed into a building. It looks like I'm destroying schools or something. Like, they don't look like the most uh, sinister of all buildings. They're just, like, innocuous purple buildings that I guess people congregate in. Or whatever. Um, but yeah, so this game uh, has had re-releases, believe it or not. They kept the graphics in the CGA palette, though, which I think makes sense. I, I don't think it would make sense to uh, do anything else. Um, but apparently, apparently, and, and I don't know if this is 100% true anymore, but there used to be a thriving Sopwith community where people would, like like recently, like as recently as like eight years ago, which in, in the timeline of Sopwith, this game came out in like the 80s. It's like a 40-year-old game. So eight years ago, people were still playing it, posting high scores and all that. I don't know if it's still going on, uh, but people were doing it. So the game when, when source code gets released, games never really die, I think. Anyway, let's try um, a single-player match against the computer and see what that's like. I have a feeling... We are going to be destroyed, but oh, you can see the computer on our radar. Oh, he's like coming for us. Oh, we both. Okay, he crashed first, so technically I won that. Oh, look, and he just spawns again, and he comes for us. Wow, this is really cool. Oh, <laughs> I crashed instantly. Can he bomb us? I don't know. I think there's a way to speed up. I don't know how to slow down, by the way. Um, oh, he just crashed right in front of us. Oh, and then we crashed. Oh, and we crashed on him. Yeah, so if you hold X, you go faster. There must be a way to slow down one of these buttons. Oh, God. Hey, wait, there's sound? There's sound? Oh, my God. All right, we were playing this whole game on mute. Welcome to the world of PC speaker, guys. I apologize for playing for playing the first half of the game on mute. But uh, there we go. Let's see if we can bomb this. Oh, yeah, the sounds. Oh, that was a perfect bombing. Oh, two perfect bombings. Oh, and we crashed. <laughs> the end. Oh my god, there's multiple computers. Did you see that? There's like multiple computer airfields. Hold on here. Let's get this going again. Okay, you have to turn the sound on, it seems. That is weird. So it's sort of like by default, the game has no sound. You actually have to... It's like a feature. It's like, did you actually want to play this game with sound? Oh god. This is a challenging game. With Alley Cat, I was able to beat a level. I have a feeling... Oh, that guy just crashed for no reason. With uh, this one, I feel like that's not going to happen. Oh, I bombed myself. I was experimenting with keys to see what else we could do. Can we... Yeah, I think once you get going fast, like, that's that. You're not allowed to slow down. I can't figure it out. All right, if there is a button to slow you down, I don't want to know it. I'm a, I'm a speed demon in the world of Sopwith. Oh, yeah, we got that. Oh, he, he got behind me and he zeroed my six. You dick. Well, playing against computers it actually makes this game way harder. 
I didn't think I could beat this without the computers. Now you add computers and it's just like near impossible. Okay, let's let's see the uh, stalling again. We I thought the stalling occurred if you went forward up too long, you would stall. I didn't realize you had to hit the top of the screen. All right, for funsies, let's try the single player one more time. And actually, I want to see what happens when you select multiplayer. But anyway, off we go to the races. I've got my sop with experience. Practice now. See if I can uh, actually do this, actually beat a level. So here's my question to you guys today. What are classic, or not so classic, but cherished old DOS games that you guys remember? Um, I I was watching, you know, YouTube actually recommended a video to me that was called like, uh, damn it. It was called 100 DOS games, 100 like classic DOS games. And I was watching it and that's where I kind of saw Alley Cat and Sop with and I thought, oh my God, I forgot these games existed. There are actually other games too that, uh, you know what I could do is just fly all the way to the left and turn around. That would make life a lot easier. Um, there are other games too, of course, and I jotted down the names of a couple of games that we have to like try together sometimes. Oh God, stalled. But I I had forgotten that Sopwith was a thing. So what are some cherished games that you guys know of on DOS? It can be games that were considered really good. It, be, it can be games that weren't considered all that good, but you know, you still had a soft spot for them. Like I wouldn't consider, even though like Sopwith might still have like uh, a vibrant fan community, I wouldn't necessarily consider this to be like an amazing game. It was like, it was an old DOS game. And back in the DOS days, you know, sometimes we played things because it was kind of the best we had. Um, it, it's actually a pretty good uh, flight simulator game. Kaboom! That totally backfired. But we cleared the whole left side of the screen. So I think we might have a chance at this one. Okay, we got that. We got these buildings. Oh my god, we might actually pass a level in software. I'm getting ready with my bombs. Um, I think you can run out of fuel, by the way. So I'm going to have to be careful not to let that happen. Kaboom! Get down here, kaboom. Oh, the tank. Tank evaded me, okay. So we're gonna have to go back for the tanks. And I'm pretty sure I am running out of fuel. Okay, we got that tank. Got that tank. Oh my God, this could actually happen, guys. The the end of Sopwith. Oh no, <laughs> on the last one. On the last one, do we have an extra life? Oh, we do. All right, we're going at this one high high speed. I don't know if this is a wise choice because I do not know how to slow down. We're either going to pass this level or we're going to die trying. Oh my god. Oh, we got it. We did it. Oh, the computer has taken the reins and we are flying off into the sunset. We passed the game. That's it. Oh, there's only one level. Okay. So back to DOS. And if you do try and play the game multiplayer, enter a game number. You get an I.O. error. So Sopwith here, a uh, classic CGA uh, single player experience. Man, I'm, I'm glad we passed the game. I honestly did not think I had it in me after all these years. Um, Alley Cat and Sopwith, you know, two classic games that, you know, I wouldn't necessarily consider them like amazing games, but I mean, think of 38 kilobytes, how much they squeezed into Alley Cat. That's pretty cool, you know? Think of this game, like back back in like the early 80s when I would have been playing it, it's like, there, there's a lot going on here. So yeah, um, I don't know if they hold up nowadays. I think Sop Sopwith still has co competition, or com competitions, but I don't know. These games have a soft spot in my head. So did you guys play any old DOS games? Did you play any old CGA games? I'd be really curious to hear. Maybe there's other like really uh, bad, but good games like this that are still floating around out there. I mean, I played many, many other CGA games, so it's possible that we have more overlap in our old DOS games. But yeah, um, guys, I hope you had fun today. I hope it was uh, brought back some nostalgia for you to see some CGA games. Whether you played Alley Cat and Sopwith or not, I hope you played them because I certainly did. Oh, God, this guy's like right on our tail. We can't lose him. Let's see if we can use some piloting maneuvers. Nope. He's just gonna fly, he's gonna burn our fuel and then he's gonna win because we'll have no fuel. He's like all over us. Oh, but we made him crash. Tactics. Oh, suicided in him. 
Anyway, <laughs> I need to stop playing this game. It's actually kind of fun to like mess with the computer. Anyway, guys, I hope this has been a fun day for you, fun video. If it has, don't forget to like the video and all that stuff. Tell all your friends and family to check me out and to, uh, if they like DOS games, send them a link to my channel. Other than that, you all take care of yourselves, and I will see you soon with a new video and a new game. Till then, my friends, peace. Tactics!